Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Alex and today we're going to talk about managing cookies with Spring Boot. Cookies, as you probably know, are stored in the browser locally. They contain arbitrary data and they are sent back to our server with each request. And this can be used to store user preferences, implement user tracking, or sometimes even authentication. Cookies are either bound to a session in the browser or they can be made persistent by providing an expiration date. So let's crunch some cookies, let's code. So as usual, we are starting with a basic Spring MVC application. And the first thing that we want to do is add a new controller so we can play around with it a little bit. This is a REST controller as usual as well. So we start with a function to actually write a cookie. So let's do a gap mapping for this one. And then, yeah, cookie sounds good. Um, no need to return anything here just yet. So how would we go about adding a cookie? We could request um, the response, which is the HTTP servlet response. And then on the response, we could say add a cookie. And the cookie is cookie crunch, like this one. So this will create a new cookie. And let me import this. Cookie is the name and crunch is the value. And we can just add it to the response and off we go. So let's actually start this. If we go to Chrome, you will see I brought in the developer tools down here so we can better see it. And now let's go to the cookie endpoint and check the request. So if I go here, we can see there's the cookies tab in there and it says we got a response cookie. It has the name cookie, it has the value crunch, which is correct. And it's tied to the domain localhost, which is also correct. It doesn't have a path. Uh, usually it's the, the root path for which the cookie is available. Then it says the token expires with the session. So it means if we close the browser, then the cookie will be gone. We can make it persistent as we will see in a moment. And here are two more relevant flags. First one is HTTP only. This is not set and there's also secure. HTTP only means that this cookie is only accessible by the browser or HTTP clients but it's not accessible to client-side scripts, that is JavaScript. This is just an additional security measure to make sure that client-side scripts cannot mess with your cookies and change them. And the second important flag is secure, which means if that is set, the cookie is only allowed to travel via HTTPS. Now let's see how to customize this further. Let's go back to the IDE. Uh, we can do better. We don't even need to do this on the request response level. By the way, if we want to read cookie values, we can also ask for the request, get the cookies, and then just iterate over them if we wanted to. But let's do it the spring way. So first of all, we get rid of the request. And then there's a builder for cookies, which is a response cookie from. We give it a different name this time. We call this theme, just assuming that our users want to store their preferences for the theme of our website. So we set the value to dark. We could build it already, but now let's configure a few more things. So domain, that's uh, again, localhost, max h. So now here we make it persistent and say, this is only available for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, the browser will discard the cookie. And uh, we set the flex for HTTP only to true and secure is also true. So this means we only allow HTTPS connections for this cookie. We can set the path again explicitly to this one and then we build it. But now we need to return a response explicitly. So what we're going to do is return response entity. Okay. Yeah, we do as suggested. So first of all, Let's make sure that we return response entity. It doesn't have a string actually, but let's make it void. That should work because we don't return any data here. And I usually also like to use the static types for string values. So that's the set cookie header. So cookies are sent in the header as we also will see in a moment. This is how we build a response cookie, how we set the key, the value and all the parameters and we return the response entity where this header is set. So now let's restart the application and go back to Chrome. Now let's hit the cookie endpoint once more. There are two things that we see. So in the initial request, it said response cookie. So we got the cookie. And now with the second request, we can see that the browser is returning the cookie that we got initially back to the server, which is what we would expect, right? So it says, this is the request cookie. That's the initial cookie. And now we also got a new cookie from the server, which is theme which is set to dark. We can see here the path. It expires in one minute from now, so we have to hurry up. 
and it is only allowed to be sent via HTTP and it is secure. So here's the thing, secure requires us to have a HTTPS connection place, which we don't have, right? Whenever we develop with local host, we usually don't use certificates, but this is the exception. So this flag will make sure that the cookie is only allowed to travel via HTTPS unless you're developing using local host, in which case it is allowed. This is the one exception to the rule. And this is why we can use it here. So this is the response cookie. And so the final thing that is missing is reading that value in the spring way. So let's go back to the IDE. So we built another endpoint. It's also a gut mapping. We call this um, preferences, preferences like so. Fun prefs. And we now want to access the cookie value for the theme that we set here. So the spring way of doing this is uh, using an annotation. It's called cookie value. And this is the theme. Now you can see, since I'm using Kotlin, this is not allowed to be nullable, but in fact, this could be null if the cookie had expired, etc. So it's usually a good idea to either make this optional or set a default value. And we make the default value dark here. So now it is always set, but this would now be a little bit too easy because we set dark here. So let's make it actually bright so we can see the difference. And what we're going to do is we quickly lock this um, so that we see something. Lock info user picked the theme theme like this. And we don't need to return a string here. We just lock it uh, for this new get mapping. Let's restart. Restart it. Go back to Chrome. And now we have the preferences endpoint. So here you can see this time we didn't specify the theme, right? In the, in the previous request, you could see we got the response cookie, we got the theme, but now in the preferences, we don't send the theme. And this is because the theme had already expired. So let's quickly check the IDE. It says user picked the bright theme, which is the default because we don't have any set, right? So we first would have to go back to the um, cookie endpoint, which now sets the theme again. Now we have it here, theme dark. And if we go now to the preferences, we can see we also sent the theme. So if we check the lock, it should now say uh, we picked the dark theme as is the case. Now to wrap things up, uh, one funny question may be how can you actually delete a cookie? And the pragmatic way of deleting an existing cookie is let's assume we want to delete the theme proactively. What you could do is you could set the value uh, to empty like so. And you could also do this. So this says the max age is zero seconds. So as soon as the browser gets this cookie, it will discard it, which is effectively the same as deleting it. Now, this was a quick intro in how you can use cookies using Spring Boot and Spring MVC. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I see you in the next one.